right, people. Welcome back to the show. Woo! All right, the next step in opening your pool is taking the cover off. Yeah, you gotta get the cover off if you're gonna swim in it, but you want to have fun doing it. All right, here's how you do it and have fun, baby. Woo! All right, it's gonna be a beauty day. We're taking the cover off my pool. We're taking the cover off my pool. It's gonna be a beauty day. Ah, you ready to go, people? All right, here we go. And I bet you didn't even know. All right. And then we're up here nice and high. All right, here we go. Cover up the pool time. For the pool plunge, my most infamous skit, uh, the one where I broke my neck. All I wanted to do was show a fun way to open your pool, because it's a real fucking drag doing that, really pumping off the pond water and all that shit. So I had the brilliant idea of setting a, um, a ladder up against a five foot high fence. Unfortunately, I didn't think it through all the way. So I tied off the bottom of the ladder with bungee cords. I couldn't find any, uh, any rope hanging around. So as I start going up the ladder, it's going yibbity yibbity, and I figure, oh, this is gonna, it's gonna propel me out into the middle of the pool. Beautiful. When I jumped off the ladder, it kind of went fucking boing, and I went straight down and broke my third and fourth cervical vertebrae, crushed them, and then bounced and landed into the pool. Uh, luckily, a kid next door was home for lunch, and he heard the kerfuffle, and, and the guest saw me jump off the ladder and saw it fucking go boing. Oh. And he goes, uh, you hear in the background, Mom, call 911. Holy fuck. And I'm laying in the pool, fucking moaning. Camera's still running, and the cops and the fire department are all there. They don't notice the camera until one of the neighbors, oh, like, why was he jumping off a ladder? And the neighbor, well, he's shooting a TV show. So the cops wanted to see the footage. All my neighbors were buying pot off me at the time. So they're standing here checking out all the footage and right above their head fucking three feet was like a grow up fucking 200 plants
takes your soul lost without a trace It holds you down and turns you round and puts you in your place Fame means fuck all. I never even cared what people thought about me because I didn't start this journey to become famous. I don't give a fuck. Fame is highly, highly overrated. Uh, if you like people bothering you on the street and thinking that you're that exact same person that they saw on TV, sign up for it now. If your soul is fulfilled by that kind of bullshit, I feel sorry for you. Meet cable television personality Ralph Zavadil. His fans call him Captain Video. Hey, people! Welcome to the Captain Video Show! Yeah. Ah. The Captain has been entertaining Canadian cable viewers for years with his wild and wacky homegrown comedy. Hey, people! How do you like that? <laughs> if you had cable TV in the mid-90s and you lived in Niagara, you knew who Captain Video was. You either watch the show on Friday nights or somebody taped it for you. Local cable TV, for the most part, is pretty safe stuff, non-offensive, and Ralph wasn't that, and uh, that's why he stood out. People thought he was just a goofier version of America's funniest home videos, right, because it was all these accidents he was filming himself doing. In hindsight, he was actually ahead of his time. There you go! Ah, woo! What a rock! The Jackass guys were doing his stuff maybe three or four years later, so he was doing it before Johnny Knoxville. Yeah! Oh yeah! I don't like it! Sometimes we would uh, stay up and watch the Captain Video show, and his father would get up halfway through and say, I'm not going to watch this. But I would stick it out to the end, and I'd go, oh my god, I hope nobody knows that that's my son. My mom just roll her eyes in the back of her head and go, oh, there he goes again, snorting eggs, eating cat food, jumping off the shit, fucking what up. Well, she wouldn't swear, but. Hey, 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 people! Welcome to the Captain Video Gardening Show! Ew! I don't know how much thought he put into these things, but he would slide off his roof. He would I, I, abuse I, his yard. We're gonna show you people at home how to have fun with grass. He would abuse his house. It made people, I don't know, appreciate their own insanity. Don't try this at home, kids! Or their own goofiness or their own yeah. joviality. Those are all just words. Yeah. It's just being a fucking nut bar and embracing the nut bar in everyone. I think it exists in every single human out there, except for friggin' psychos that kill people. That's, that's bullshit, but... My father was a great example for me. How's it going, Dad? Happy Father's Day, belated. <laughs> my dad was like the clown. Plug in a video of Dad, and there he is, run around the garden in a Speedo, eating vegetables, and <laughs> just doing anything to make you laugh. <laughs> He's forever immortalized. During his 73rd birthday party, I still remember him standing on my picnic table and... Right, 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 here go! Yes, He'd do a five foot deep pool, 73 years old in his little speedo, just give it her. And I said to myself then, you know what? When I'm 73, I better be diving into a little pool too. And you guys wonder where I get it from, eh? Yeah. 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 He would literally do the entire show alone. He would set up his camera, get all his props ready, stand in front of it, do his goofy stunts, and that was it. He didn't have a, a lighting guy, a sound guy, a makeup guy, anything. It was just him on his own, so the production values were, like, non-existent. I've never really seen anybody snort raw eggs up their nose before. So we crack an egg! And had I ever Shake wanted to, I now know what would have happened had I done it. Videos, it's the breakfast. Get one today. Maybe that. And of course, there's hair pie when he cut all the dog's hair and then yes, covered them right. with Cool Whip and ate them. Captain Video wasn't like their other shows. It was unpredictable. It was goofy. It was uh, dangerous. It was pretty hardcore stuff, certainly for cable television. Ralph is just a wild guy. He just happened to own a camera. 
It's his hobby. <laughs> Some guys play with model trains and stuff. Ralphie jumps off ladders in the pools. <laughs> Ralph would get on there. He would do something called unidentified flying laundry bags. He would find these bags from the laundromat. He would find a way to make them float, and he would set like about four or five of them in the air. Lift up! Look at it go so gracefully. Ah! No! And then he'd just forget about them. They'd just float off, and that would be it. He'd be on to the next stunt. So people looked in the sky and saw these weird things floating by, and that was, that was Captain Video doing that. There she be in the sky. Floating beauty, beauty, beauty. I often wondered what kind of fans Ralph had. I assumed they were all either drunk or with very low IQs. I'm sorry. <laughs> How you doing, Matt? Hi. I'm Ralph. I'm Matt. Pleased to meet you, Matt. Watch your head. Zoom. <laughs> that is incredible. I just tried to capture everything that was the essence Your, of the Captain video. And this picture is that old, too? Yeah, roughly around the same time. I think this came out. 14 years old. Yeah. Double T? Voila! Awesome. It's going to be a beauty day! <laughs> wow, thanks so much. Man. Thank you, man. I can't believe that. That's friggin' gorgeous. And here it is. When you actually steer it, it the chain stays with the wheels, so it doesn't uh, depunctify. So that used to be a chainsaw? Yeah. Chainsaw, a little bit of stuff. Let's see if she even starts up. <laughs> All right, I need a smoke now. I guess Ralph was always a bit weird. <laughs> if there was something he could do, he would do it. If there was something he couldn't do, he'd try. I think he tried even harder after he was told that he had cancer. He fought and he just kept fighting. They didn't tell me I had cancer. They told my parents first, which really pissed me off. But I knew 100% I was gonna live. Give me 25 lumbar punctures, bone marrow, yeah, whatever. You gotta stick a needle that big into me, cool. Whatever you need to do, I'm coming out the other side. I guess out of all that came an ambition to do everything so skateboards you had to have a 10-foot ramp and that's the way he's always done things i haven't psychoanalyzed myself enough to know exactly what cancer did but i can take a guess uh, made me want to give every second of my life give her live it there's an old saying it was from rudolph the red-nosed reindeer bumbles bounce Ralph must be a bumble, and he bounces. Hey, hey, Mac and Rennie, hey! All right, it's Captain Video here. Ew! You know, sometimes you can't get up to do your tobogganing, so what you do is you just do a little rooftop tobogganing! Yeah! Goes just like this, baby! Get over on your roof, and then you get ready to go! Ah! Ew! All right! Hey, little putters, don't try that at home! You! Holy fuck. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's cool. Oh. Oh, it's cold. Being unsatisfied oh. with your job is common in every facet of society, not just to factories or offices. That was fun though, fuck. When I left high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I always liked goofing around or playing with cameras. 
but I took machine shop classes, so well, you should be a millwright. What's a millwright? Okay, so what do you do at GM? Uh, sleep. Very interesting. I come out for 16 hours and go around and do whatever. <coughs> uh, oh, yeah, plus lunch. I go and play cards. No, but I actually have a mill right there. Right. So uh, I fix machines when they break down, and if they don't break down, then... Uh, you play cards. Yeah. GM got rid of me after I came in one night shift, and I was a wee bit liquored up, and they couldn't wake me up. So when they finally did wake me up, I had two foremen around me and a general foreman and about five guys. And they, Ralph, uh, you better grab your lunch pail. You're off for a while. And I went, oh, oh, oh. When I started at rehab, I was in denial. I don't have a problem. Yeah, whatever. I mean, everyone is. I would numb the pain with the booze. The pain of sitting at a chair for eight hours, doing the same thing day in, day out. That's the only reason I finally admitted, yeah, I got a problem with alcohol, yeah. A lot of the men hated their job, but they were trapped. The money. Once you sign up for that mortgage and, and you've got three kids, it's not like you can say, well, I think maybe I'll take up um, videotaping rock bands. It doesn't work that way. I just know what I did and what I had to do. Otherwise, I'd be dead right now, no doubt. When they called me back, the union said, okay, you've been off long enough now, it's time to come back. Don't try that at home! <laughs> I was scared shitless, and I told them, no, I can't. I can't come back. Being sober allowed me to look a, a little further past just what the money meant to me, but what spending a third of my life doing what I didn't want to do, what that did to me. So I started Captain Video Productions, and found a way to make money off this little camera. Beautiful. Hey there, boys and girls. Welcome to the Captain Video Show. Ew! Bringing it to you from my studio, baby. What a fast look. I got. Hello. I did that. Oh, fuck. I fucking ripped it out. I knew it. Captain Video was born... Bastard. ...in a nightclub. I didn't like that anyway. I was videotaping a rock band, and I had on this steel hard hat. Put a bunch of lights on it. And got it all plugged in so I could, like... Okay, rock and roll, whatever, yeah, it doesn't matter if you didn't bring your own lights or couldn't afford them. At one club, The Hideaway in St. Catharines, I was shooting bands and stepping in like big puddles of beer on the floor. Since I wired the helmet myself, I didn't put the grounding on right. So every time I would hit that puddle of beer, I would like... Holy fuck. It still kept the camera going and you could see a little jerkiness in it when you uh, check the footage back later. But um, an old friend of mine from uh, public school says, oh, wow, Ralph, you look like, like Captain Video or something with that when you're doing that dance that you're doing. I'm going, dude, I'm fucking electrocuting myself. Fuck off. But I remember what he called me. He goes, Captain Video. And I took a look at the helmet, and I went, fucking right. I do look like a Captain Video. Ralph was at a bar one night, uh, months before I'd met him, and it was like, who is that nut bar running by? And uh, lo and behold, who would have thought months later that I would have started dating him? I met Nancy at a club up in Thorold, and she came up to me and said, uh, you have a nice bum. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Street. I think I was too afraid to ask exactly what Captain Video was. So I know he used to talk about it, and I just like, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> when Nancy and I started dating, uh, I was just starting to do the Captain Video show. So forget the gummy.
gummy bears, Captain Video has come up with gummy hairs. Yes, it's a brand new candy. And I'll show you how to make it. Ready to die. Oh. Hey, kids. How's it going? What the fuck is that? Is <laughs> what? She would help me out with the shows, sometimes hiding underneath the weight bench and smashing uh, light bulbs or rubbing stuff on me. Or... I did get to help out. I think you see my hands in the breaking of the fluorescent light bulbs. I didn't know you were going to break them before. Neither did I. And that was a big deal to him because it was his show. From start to finish, it was all Ralph. I don't even think I got credit mentioned on there <laughs> at the time, but Ralph and I did some interesting things that I don't think I would have done with just anybody. Nancy and I were both adventurous spirits. We had the daredevil instinct. The racing was an extension of that. Nancy and I went to the Toronto Motorcycle Show, and she's watching these guys. And she just went, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to beat these guys. They look fucking hot, man. You see your ass in those compared to the other ones. My racing was like Ralph's Captain Video. It was my high on the track, and Ralph loved being there and, and videotaping and stuff. As Nancy's manager agent, uh, there was only two of us, so I had to be well-versed on the telephone and, and have it, almost a written script about what I was going to say. Hi, I'm Ralph Zavadil, manager and agent for Nancy Dewar, the young motorcycle racer I just had the pleasure of introducing to you. An integral part of any racing team is sponsorship. Without the money, there just wouldn't be any sport. And that's exactly the purpose of this promo tape. And we had to have uh, a resume, a professional resume. So I put that, uh, together a video resume for her. Nancy did so well in the regional series racing the YSRs um, that when we found out there was a nationals out in Calgary, uh, I said, oh, let's go, let's go, you're great, let's go kick ass. Oh, well, CP, you ready to go? I'm ready to go. All right, me too. You gonna race your heart out or what? I'm gonna win. Do it best. All right, let's go. Hey guys, I love you, I love you. We'll see you in three weeks, okay buddies? My first experience on the road was with Ralph. We started to get to know each other over time and little habits and little quirks and it just, uh, you, know, you learn to love the person. <laughs> I know that. This is day number three. Quite a major undertaking driving there. We haven't, we've never driven across Canada before, and we're in a little old Ford Escort into this little punky utility trailer, driving along behind us and breaking down. A week and a half long road trip, uh, sleeping on the side of the road in the car, and snoring and stopping and making love at the side of the road in the woods. and It's a total bonding experience. You're spending 24 hours a day with the same person. Um, so you grow real close, real fast. It was awesome. Yes! Clothesline skiing, I did that right after I did rooftop tobogganing because I was running out of ideas for the show and I had to have it, have it in by 5 o'clock that night. He wanted to uh, slide from one clothesline pole to the other. When he did it, one of the poles hey, snapped in half. Yeah, it was a 200-pound pole. It just missed his head by inches. Whoa! And then my neighbors came home from work. Uh, it was their clothesline, and they saw the, they saw it down, and they thought I was in the hospital for sure. Again, kiddies, don't try that at home. Like a lot of stupid things.
things I do! You! I had asked them before time um, if they would mind if I used their clothesline, and they says, well, no, it'll pull off the house, don't. But, I mean, you gotta have a TV show in the can in five hours. You just go, ah, fuck, whatever. They'll be good with it. Oh, oh, oh. oh they're gonna be pissed. In the beginning, he didn't want anyone around when he was doing the skits. I would just see things that he would do, and I had my favorites, the one off the roof and jumping through the, the shed. I tried lots of times to talk to him about building bigger stunts, but he didn't. He just insisted doing it on his own, and I always thought, you know, he could be more than what it was if he would just think a little bit about, you know, his script or who knows where it could have led him. But he didn't do that. I met Buick at a party years ago, and I wanted to videotape him doing his glass art and stuff. Hello. I started coming around the shop, because this guy's making the glass and welding up stoic sculptures. And I didn't want to just sit around while he was working. Then he started having me be part of it. Yeah. Yeah, Ralphie's really conscientious of, uh, all these little small details, glasses, and oh, I like the details. the details. Even the nice matching coats we got. Oh, yeah. That's all Ralphie. You look like a team then, man. This is where it's at in the shop with my best bud, Ralph. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? Yeah, eventually what I would like to do is have my virtual gallery in here. I'm going to get a chandelier in here and paint all the walls, and I'll clear all this stuff out, and I'll just set this all my... Uh, pieces up through here and then this is going to be our shipping and shipping and receiving just love seeing all this junk come alive and putting it together and assembling it into something then suddenly it's you're just you're blown away you're like wow and it's an honest angle too it's honest artwork it's nothing pretentious about it at all okay, that's the other thing i love about it it's just spontaneous and quick oh, look at these and just working on your emotions on it, you know, like you're just what comes intuitive, you know? You don't think about it too much. It seems to be the way to do it. All the nicest things seem to come that way. Struggle with it too much, then it, I don't know, you lose something. We're both passionate about what we do, that's for sure. He's a very passionate guy and so am I, and that's why we make the connection on that level. Definitely, Ralphie inspires me, keeps me going, for sure. He's an awesome friend. What is Ralph doing? Our final road trip, we went from Shubin, Acadie, Nova Scotia, to Portland, Oregon, and had a race at their airport track, and that's when uh, the accident happened. I was on the outside of uh, uh, a young boy that was actually learning to ride, and I went to grab some front brakes to take the outside around a turn on him, and I had no front brakes. I hit the guardrail, and it just catapulted me up in the air, and I did, I believe, several cartwheels. and I ended up landing in front of a chain link fence on my back. So we had to stay at Portland for two weeks, so I slept in the hospital bed right beside her and sometimes out in the van. I didn't know if I was guilty about not putting the brakes back together properly and bleeding the lines, so there was a lot of feelings of guilt, whether it was my fault that she's gonna have a punky leg. Yeah, I did feel guilty. But I, I tested the brakes afterwards, and, and the bike was pretty, uh, pretty chewed up, but uh, they were fine, and I didn't know if she just didn't apply it. Well, I don't know. You can always second guess everything, but uh, yeah, she just she wanted to get back on the bike as soon as possible. I'm busted up, and Ralph's my caregiver, so uh, it changed everything. You know, you're not combing my hair right, you're not tying my shoes right, you're not, you're not doing anything right, you know? Don't touch me, I hurt, that kind of thing. It was great in some ways, and in other ways it was 
a little too close for comfort. But she couldn't use her hands. So when you have to do personal things, like um, using the washroom, you go really close to another person when you have to wipe their ass, I'll just tell you that. Being busted up for six months turned into two years. Surgery after surgery, it just seemed it was never ending. She was still talking about racing. Oh, do you think I'll be able to make the uh, Grand Nationals in Atlanta? No, I don't think so. What we had done over the three years was we had raced together. And then when she wasn't doing it anymore, we kind of went different ways. There were a couple stunts that I did that didn't go exactly as planned. Um, one of them was the instant razor in a bottle. Here we go. This is the one and only take of this puppy. Do it, brother. Do it. All right. Those are the ones I really thought, what is he trying to prove? It scared me. And of course, it finished up with the final one. I got the tape from the police. Well, the first that I knew that Ralph had had the accident in the fall was when I received a call from the hospital to tell me that he was there. And at that point, I didn't know how it had happened, I just knew he'd injured himself. Ralph, don't worry, I'm on the ambulance. Ralph? Oh, yeah. Are you okay? No. So they just handed me the tape. I went home, put it on, and that's when I found out exactly what had happened. And, well, my husband and I both started crying. <laughs> Oh, God. What? Oh, just stay there. Don't move. had already had my accident and I can remember he was laying in his hospital bed they had him on I believe it was morphine or something and he looked at me and said you don't understand just what it's like to break any bones it was probably one of the last times I ever spoke to Ralph actually he was very lucky that the boy next door had been watching he could have drowned I realized then he was taking huge risks with himself. And I think he realized it too, and I'm glad. Hi, I'm John Daly, and we begin with something unusual, a tape of a bright man who tries a stupid stunt, and he does it in front of a rolling video camera. It involves climbing a ladder and jumping into a swimming pool. As our Sabila Vargas shows us, it makes you wonder, what's he thinking? People laughing at it, me breaking my neck, that was what it was all about. 
but I didn't base my life savings on selling my accident, breaking my neck. That was just kind of bonus stuff, buy some new rims for the car or whatever. In the video, it looks like I have the ladder leaning up against this tree here, but it's actually just leaning right up against this fence. I couldn't move for about four weeks, just had to lay on the couch, but uh, I thought healing thoughts and... I did some ecstasy one night and fucking cured my back. It's fucking beautiful. Friend gave me this little blue tablets and put on Frank Zappa, apostrophe, and my neck, no fucking problems, and I was stretching. He's going, take it easy, take it easy. And I'm like, okay, fucking no problems, you have, check this out. Yeah. It may be the dumbest stunt ever caught on tape, and it could cost him his life. That ball didn't knock any sense into that guy, right? Hey, people! That was one stupid stunt for the captain, and a giant boost of publicity for my show. Oh, I loved it. I just thought it was great. I love you. We're sitting in the backyard, Hollywood's calling, right? And then these guys from, where was it, China came? Oh, man. But in the end, he actually made quite a bit of money, I guess, off all the people paying for these skits and him busting his neck. I was going down in the elevator, and two 12-year-old boys got on on the floor below me. And he turns and he says, this is Captain Video's mom. And they both go, oh, wow, are you ever lucky? <laughs> Maybe over a decade ago, I encountered Rolf Zavadil, Captain Video. For a number of years, I worked with Rolf and our third partner, William Alexander. And uh, Malcolm brought me this tape, and he said, oh, my god, you got to see this crazy guy. I mean, this guy is insane, the stunts he does. And so I took a look at the tape. I said, is this guy alive? I was totally mesmerized by this crazy man who was out of his mind doing this stuff. And I said, OK, uh, where do I sign? I'll, I'll come on board. So we all met up at uh, William's penthouse apartment and blew my mind right in Toronto skyline and came up with a great idea to let's put together a pilot show of this and shop it around to the networks. In 1996, the interruptions to TV life have become more global and frequent. Investigative authorities from around the world have coordinated their efforts in trying to apprehend this notorious villain. When these industry guys started taking a look at me and taking it seriously, I was super excited, man. They were pulling out these super beta cams and lighting rigs, and then we'd go to the editing studios that had a wall of monitors. And so I was jazzed. I was super excited. Here comes Peter Cottontail, up and down the bunny trail. <laughs> hey, people, happy Easter! Eventually, the last show that I did involved uh, little Easter tricks, hanging a bunny rabbit up. Here comes Peter Cottontail, running down the happy trail. Ooh, okay. it's gonna be I didn't hurt the rabbit, and I showed a bikini contest and stuff like that. So these pinhead wankers who have nothing else to do with their life phoned up and left a message. Oh, I could see what those girls had for breakfast. Oh, my god, those bikinis were just, no, eh, fuck off. Now, to finish your decorating, you get some eggs, and then you go, Dooja! The Captain Video Show was my way of expressing how I felt about goofiness. It was my own personal wank. And some people dug it, some people didn't. Whatever. Ralph's classic Easter stunt was to squirt uh, chocolate sauce on a puppy, and then he would lick it off. It was not his most well thought out stunt. Chocolate coated puppies! I like if that. puppy licks chocolate sauce, it's not going to be good. It's poisonous to them. Yeah, you got it. The Monday after the Easter show, the shit hit the fan at Cable 10. What are you doing? Oh, Their answering machine was filled up about people complaining about it. 
and they also had a visit from the Humane Society. After that, they pulled the plug, and I thought they wimped out. You took the one show that people liked watching off cable TV. You didn't score points with too many people. Hi, I love Captain Video Show. Keep him on the air. He is loved, and if he is taken off the air, there will be riots in the street and rebelliousness all over the place. We love him. I think there's enough people in our community that have the same mindset as me, that love rock and roll and, and love goofiness, that it was, uh, yeah, it tore a chunk out of my heart not to be able to broadcast my idiosity to the idiositors out there. So I got a nice letter from them and felt like my favorite toy had been taken away. It was my release. It was my time to get in my Batman costume and be a fool. Um, I'm sure I find ways to do it nowadays. It's just not nearly as fun. If you don't like what you see here, change the channel, man, with your little corporate channel changer. It's great. The response that I got from the puppy show, from the Humane Society, um, I knew I was dealing with human beings, and they're a pretty fucked up breed. So I wasn't really worried about what other normies think. I know that there's a class of people out there that just get it, and there's a class of people who just don't. And they have to put on their Sergeant Stadenko hats and go, hey, I'm the boss. Uh, you're not treating these animals right. Dude, put some chocolate syrup on their back, showed me licking it off and then washing it off. They didn't get a drop in their tongues. There you go. <sighs> so many people, Bob Barker, fucking now Drew Carey, tell you to get your pets spayed and neutered. There'd be no more dogs left in the universe if they were. And what's that all about? I think they're just talking to the people who are watching their TV shows, sitting around on the couch watching friggin' game shows. Yeah, so people who don't watch those shows should not get their pets spayed and neutered. They just should enjoy the beauty of puppies. sit right here while they're having their puppies. Not a problem. Feed her water, wash the puppy. Two second old puppy. No problem, Ralphie's here. This is about life and procreation. This here right now going on right this second is about life. I was staying with a gentleman friend down in Port Colburn. I'd stayed overnight, and his radio comes on automatically in the morning, and it was the news, and it says there's been a, an, a, an arrest and uh, for uh, growth and possession of marijuana on Waverly Road in St. Catharines. <laughs> And I jumped out of bed and went running around the room going, God damn it all anyway, God damn. And the guy says, what's wrong? I said, that's my son. <laughs> I wasn't embarrassed or anything. I just figured, well, it's about time. <laughs> he never lived at home growing. His father grew it at home. <laughs> 
having five undercover officers, they were all freakier looking than me, longer hair, walk into my front door and tell me to sit down. I'm under arrest. That was about 10 times scarier than jumping off a ladder. Just a total feeling of fuck. Holy shit, shit, Margaret. Who are talking lots of stuff? Lots of beautiful stuff. When he got busted, your first concern is, how serious is this? Like, are you going to go to jail? Whatever it is we're hoping to do with you as a partnership to promote your, your career, like, are you going to be in jail instead? This is Captain Video signing up, baby! Yeah! I guess it kind of took the wind out of our sails. Um, not just us, but Ralph as well. And uh, it was a kind of a sobering day. It was fucking stupid. The whole idea of growing pot while you wanted to pursue a career in the United States was retarded. But then who gives a fuck? Look, it's, it's like this, man. The buildings came down in 10, 0.5 seconds, or and the other one, I think it was uh, nine point something seconds. Free fall speed. Now, Newton figured out the law of gravity 300 years ago, man. It's a formula to it. They can time the collapse of the building. This is not my theory. It's impossible for the buildings to yeah, come I know, down but in you're that speed. About some so I see these things, and you want me to just go, oh, yeah, whatever. No, I'm no, no, I'm just talking about theory. this disruptor beams and all that other I kind of I never was talking about disruptor. It's just simple, simple physics, man. It's like, you know, law of gravity, man. It's, the guy's got it all figured out, right? Long time. Yeah, OK, so there was only, like, two people involved in bringing those down? I don't know what was involved, Ralph. I'm just saying that, you I'm know. I'm saying if there were a bunch of people, no one's spoken up yet. <laughs> That's why I'm freaking out, dude. Four inches? Uh, yep. Yeah. This is fate, right? It's He's 10 times better off doing what he is right now for Ralph. Everything's perfect. It's all good. It's perfect. You know, he's, he says every day is a, a gift, but he, we don't see eye to eye on where the gift comes from. Well, I think it comes from the Almighty, but he doesn't agree with that. What a gorgeous day. I can't believe what it turned out beautiful. You know what? So you're going to bend this fucker backwards. And they said this was a snap. I don't think so. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at this. All new paint. Well awesome. done, dude. Yeah. I thought the skit was brilliant. And thought I thought punch. jumping into the pool, taking the cover off, was, would be funny. I think that's hilarious. That was perfect. Yeah. It's just tie the ladder off. Right? I didn't have any rope. Well, then you don't do the skit. No, but I had to have a show done. You take done. five seconds. Yeah, well, there you go. Rush, 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 rush. That's what I mean. If I was there, would have went out and got the rope. Would have tied it off. Would have made sure you hit the mark. Yeah. You would have called 911 so the neighbors didn't have <laughs> No, no. You would hit the pool. It would have been perfect. It would have oh, been funny. Yeah. <laughs> Captain videos. Yeah, it is. It's over. He tells me this. All he wants to do is sell my glass. Well, he's already done Captain Videos. Done. It was done 20 years ago. It was over. Wait till he starts dealing with all my galleries. Oh, yeah. I don't know about this. <laughs> Wrong move, bitch! I got a call January 14th, 2001. A girl I used to go out with wanted to know if I wanted to meet my 12-year-old daughter for the first time. I couldn't believe it. I says, well, when can I meet her? Oh, we'll have to 
go into this gradually, slowly. I was still working at General Motors and having a crappy life when my daughter was born. And there's no way I would have left General Motors in that paycheck if I had known I had a daughter and someone to support besides my mouth and the mouth of a couple of dogs. I would be a GM still, without a doubt. But still, I would, if I could take those 12 years that I missed of her life and spend it in that prison, I would do. I would ch change that in a heartbeat. So I would phone Jordan's mother once every couple months, late at night, and um, just ask her when what's happening. Is there anything happening with this yet? Are you ready to tell her? So one night I phoned up and. Uh, I got Jordan on the phone instead of her mom. It must have been about two or three in the morning. And I get Jordan on the phone. Hello. Sits, hello, is Jody there? She's sleeping. Can I ask who's speaking, please? This is Ralph, a friend of hers. Who's this? Jordan. So then we got talking and I was asking her how she was doing in school and things like that. And she goes, why do you want to know all this? I said, because I'm your father. I never knew about him growing up. Um, growing up, I, I believed that somebody else was my father. And then when I was about 12 years old, I got a phone call at uh, like around two or three o'clock in the morning and it was somebody on the phone saying hey I'm your dad and I I do this TV show Captain Video and um, and I have some puppies and you know maybe we can get to know each other and I thought I don't know if this person's drunk or what so I went downstairs to get my mom oh I have to go now and then about 30 seconds later, I got another phone call. What the fuck are you doing? Wow. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't, I, 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 I. It just kind of like clarified things a bit for me and, and I just wanted to know. I wanted to get to know Ralph and I wanted to get to know his family and it's, really great knowing all of them. His family's amazing. It's like he was always there. It's just really comfortable talking to him and definitely, I would say, unconventional. It's not like the typical father-daughter relationship. He is probably more my friend than my parent. I didn't know what kind of impression I was gonna make and I wasn't gonna get all dressed in some pinhead tweed suit. So I brought along a Captain videotape to show her who her dad was, because that's me. Um, not exactly. Yeah, it was. It was me. It's taught me that I'm not the most important person in the universe. I have someone who I help create that looks to me to see what, what life's about. I still snort eggs and shit, but that's for my own fun. Watch the loafs. <laughs> I didn't figure we'd be doing a perusal out into the lawn here, so I didn't clean up the landmines. This pole over here is uh, where I did my infamous um, telephone pole. Uh, no, that was the um, clothesline skiing. Is that the same pole? That is the same pole. <laughs> <laughs> Can they just put it back up? Shoot something, I'll fix it for them. Tesla, he invented a whole slew of things, and he never got the credit due where it was. Well, you know what, he knew in the back of his mind that he was the one, he was the pioneer, and he was the one who did all that. Um, and I think that's what counts. I don't need accolades saying, oh, I was the first jackass, you know, whatever. That's cool, no, that's, that's great that people think. But you know what I like is that I made you guys laugh and think. I mean, it doesn't look that high from here, but when you've got your feet up about, I don't know, what's that, 
15 feet high or so. And I had taken all the screws out of the shed and dumped a bag of flour on the inside of it. Right. Well, we didn't know it was it was rigged, right? Uh, ah, that's the thing. We were kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys are big fans and all that kind of stuff. I was wondering if you might want to get uh, initiated into being a, uh, an official Captain Vidiot. That's one for me. It's one for Zane. And there's one for Matt. Now you shake them up just a little bit. There's for you. There's for you. Oh, look at that. Clinging to the side of the glass. And that's impossible. <laughs> Are you going to join me? Oh, <laughs> I tried anyway. That's why you're the captain. <laughs> Please to meet you, say your prayers. There is no way back from here. And I don't care. Bet your life there's something killing you. It's a shame we have to die, my dear. No one's getting out of here alive. I miss waking up Fridays and having a deadline. That one day I had to put together a TV show. That one day I had to come up with the ideas think of where to set the camera up, what skits I was going to do, edit it, and then watch it that night while eating a pizza. And I miss it. You would have to ask him, is he in a place now where everything's going so well that he wouldn't want to break the harmony of his life and go back and revisit what he used to do and what he used to be to try to catch that, that meteor as it passes by once again. And is it passing by at all? I don't know. I think that if he wanted to do another TV show, it would be a neat idea and I'd be happy for him. But I don't think I would be the one saying, why don't you do this again? But if he wanted to, I think go for it. And who knows, he might. He does all kinds of crazy things still. <laughs> Sonic editing board. This is a beauty, man. My camera. Oh no, it seems a little big. Man, I haven't had this on my shoulders forever. These five pieces and a bunch of wires and a couple of TV sets. That's what I made the original show with. And they were saying, oh, no, no, you need beta cam, or you need 3 quarter inch, or it was before digital and the internet and all that kind of stuff. But I made a show, and I, th I think it's, it's not about how many pixels and how many mega clear things and 720 by 1594 and put it up your door. It's about what's on, the, what's actually happening. And if it's not as clear as a clown's clit, Whatever. How did that? Captain Video here. You. Good morning, it's Rotten Ralph here. How are you? I was going so through some of my old tapes yesterday, and I was um, I was looking at the dates on them, and it, it dawned on me that it's the twentieth birthday of the captain. Listen to this, what, this is this. So it's the 20th birthday. So everything they do, like uh, the spankings and pin the tail on the honky. Oh, come on, an hour special with the captain? You want to bet? You don't have to do anything. What I'm gonna do is just the way I did it before. I'm gonna edit it all down in my studio. 
This time, I'm aiming for September. Sweetness, sweetness. Now it gives me incentive to get back into my old, uh, the old video editing studio and stuff. Sounds great, Joad. You take care. Bye bye. We're gonna use the same old punky quality that we had when we did the show, and I know she says that they have the right to reserve judgment and stuff like that, but I'll just make it good and make it retrospective and so they'll understand the old stuff. Everyone's seen the pool plunge, and uh, I, yeah, their audience has gotten more whatever. They've gotten older, that's about it. I got gray hair, maybe they'll take that, but uh, fuck, man, I'm pumped. 10 years later, you're 10 years older, a little wear and tear on the body. What made you want to do this stuff again? Well, my hair's thinned a little bit, but I could still put on those goggles and, and give her again. Was there a little rust to shake off or what? 20 years ago, you could have done a lot more physical stuff. Actually, no, my body's pretty rocking still. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. You know what you're gonna say? Yeah. Should have got that. <laughs> People, Captain Video here. You coming to you from my oven? Cause I'm pretty friggin' baked. Ha! All right, we got a new 20th birthday yeah. show on Cable 10. Right. Maybe, baby. You. <laughs> Later. <laughs> there we go. That's a that fucking wrap. <laughs> beyond the Call of Duty. What if you have your small camera right here, so you're like, you light it, it's explosive, and then you... Yeah, but you can't see the TV with the small camera. Well, there. you don't need to see the TV. It's a clip. You splice, you know what I mean? Like, you're gonna... No, but I need to see the fire in the TV. Hi, it's a campfire channel. No, I'm... the first camera's on the TV, and the second camera's shooting that. You have one here and one there. Well, I, and still, both... don't, I still don't think we got enough room here to get me and those three fires oh, in. Sure you we'll do. bring it over. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, okay. I hope this thing isn't fucking flammable. Just take it easy on the gas. Well, you're the one prepping it. You're uh, the cunning stuntman. <laughs> yeah, you don't. I really don't know how much you're gonna use. This should, uh... See, it evaporates pretty quick, I think. Okay, so what am I gonna load the fireworks with? Um... The fire. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, just lean over and, uh... I use my remote control to start up my patio lanterns. <laughs> Have a nice big toke in this. Should I? No. What? Just, Just put tobacco? some tobacco, a couple cigarettes yeah, in there. Yeah, it will yeah. burn better, anyways. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, Poncho Meister. Hey, people! Get the video here? You! I like to pull up a chair by the fireplace. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't afford one, people. So Captain Video came up with the Campfire Channel. Oh yeah. And for some extra added ambiance, I like to spark up some patio lanterns. Oh yeah, just like this, baby. <laughs> give, me, give me a couple other fireworks. All right. I'll sit here and try to shoot them. <laughs> that was a big bunch of shit. <laughs> My cunning stunt director. Okay, so how do we set those off? Clothesline skiing. Well, I have devised a brand new extreme sport, and it's called cooler weed surfing. Look out your weed eater. Oh, relax. I'm trying to figure this 
right? I know, and I'm telling you how to do it, man. You can't, you have to fix that motor. It would look good if you could make it across the pool. Ask me a question and I'll you get a spin in a circle and fall in. Are you part of that is called Where do you think all these people have come from? Once we add cold water to this, that's when it really sets up. It's gonna be like friggin' slime, dude. Oh, yeah, I can just feel that goo all over my body. Ah. Just about the same. Oh. That's that got that viscosity that just makes you wanna puke. You know, like sucking back an egg white? No, I don't know anything about that. Hope this shit comes off. It's dye. It's dye? Yeah, I don't so know. It will? Does that mean it will? No, it means it won't. Oh well, whatever. There's my teeth, so beauty, beauty, beauty. Remember I told you about that skit I did? Teeth, so beauty, beauty, beauty. Great. <laughs> Ralph, where's the duct tape? Oh. We're not gonna do a tester on the glass. If I screw up the first time, right? If, if I decide that no, 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 too many shards and shit like that, then we got a we got a spare piece. We don't have to do a tester just to uh, to, to test if it's it's glass. It's going to break, right? Yeah, whatever. It's your uh, your legs and arms, not mine. Right on. Money for God's sake. Buddy, I need my uh, cutting stunt director here. Yeah, cutting stunt director. That wasn't my <laughs> idea. I told you you would cut yourself. Oh, a couple little cuts. Relax. Well, Did it look good, though? Not for that, no. Pose me down. No, don't put it on jet. <laughs> oh, Mega nipolitis. Oh, man. No. That, that is a stitch, you fucking, that's a stitch. You need a stitch on that. Yeah, whatever. It's not Throw whatever, you need to glue it. Crazy glue. You got Should crazy like, glue? Yeah, I got crazy glue. I knew, I, w I was dead against this man. There was no way I was in it. He wanted to go through a real TV screen. It was like, and you see, if he didn't even have that tape around there, he wouldn't have got all of it out of the way. The tape was the one that pulled it all away. I freaking argued with him for like hours about this. He wouldn't listen to me. We bought two pieces of glass. So let's do it, our test. No, no. He didn't want, I wanted him to break it to see what it would be like, where the glass would go and how, look, it's all over the front here and everything. Ay, ay, ay. Ralphie's crazy, man. He's insane. I think he's out of it. <laughs>
I'm following you guys from how far behind? It so all depends how fast Pete can get going on that bike. Yeah. Not any closer than that, Ralph. Not I mean, any that's, closer than like that? It's like right there. And now, from the Spinstoner Institute. <laughs> that's the Captain Video Glasshead, baby! Yeah! And there is the artist right here, Rabiuli, yeah! And there's Petey Godrunus, right on. It's gonna be a beauty day, taking my scooter along the way. Oh! Watch what's going on. See, now I had a talk. All right, people! <laughs> Look, I'm not supposed to talk. He's biking 10 miles ahead of him, not looking over his dude, shoulder. Then you gotta talk. Well, then, I, dude, it's like, stay tight. Uh, give yeah. me some instructions. Well, stay tight. Me, no, I want that bullshit. Stay tight. Well, I wasn't so, supposed to talk. So, well, that's why I told you I wasn't supposed to talk, man. Feet. Uh, yeah, you didn't say anything talked, in the first we place. We said 15, 15 feet right at the beginning. We said 10 feet. You say nothing to me. All right, well, you weren't paying attention then. No, you didn't fucking said, tell me anything. That's okay. We got I know, and it's not okay, because he was a mile ahead. All the shit went off, and it was... And I didn't want to yell out, slow down, because you're always Next yelling at me to out, shut. Slow, slow down. All yeah, right. I could cut that out, but if we can't get the shot, then there's no. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I, we have a nice quiet shot with you not yeah, saying slow down. I know, down. I know, I know. <laughs> well, I. How does it look, though? Does it look cool? No, it didn't. Oh. Because you were too. He was too far ahead. I don't think Ralph was looking for fame. I think it was more for himself. I will never, probably ever, meet anybody with that same carefree attitude. That's very hard to find. It'd be neat to sit with him and let him know what I've been up to and, you know, that he had more of an impact in my life than I think he realized at the time. I don't even know if Ralph's married. For, uh, wouldn't be surprised if he's not. <laughs> He's probably the same Ralph today in some aspects that I knew him as, uh, we're going back 15 years ago. So it really wouldn't be surprised if a lot of things haven't changed. You wouldn't believe how many tapes I've got. Like now I've got them all sorted out in the library. I've probably got about 35 tapes of our, our adventure shenanigans trips across to Calgary. Been. Remember when we first got to Calgary Airport? The fucking hail. What the hell? Ah! Driving a little Ford ah, Escort oh, across yeah. Canada. Remember when we were coming home from uh, Putnam Park, and the score broke down. What's oh, happening here? October the 12th, it was the 11th. The 11th, uh, 1993, we blew the engine! <laughs> you should video that. 
Which yeah. part? Where you were trashing the you, car? You, when you were jumping up and down on the roof. I did no such <laughs> thing. <laughs> you took the door. No, you took I the did. door and pulled it. the door. State trooper showed State up. State trooper showed up, yeah. That's it. I think there's someone coming over from the Here, I did this off. <laughs> <laughs> and it cuts to black. Did you hear I'm doing another show? 20th birthday, Captain Video oh 20th birthday show. Are you really? Yeah. <laughs> so we're thinking about a couple of skits. Um, the birth of the captain. I'm gonna come out all, like, punch my way through the back of a TV set and come out all covered in afterbirth. <laughs> it was great to see Nancy after 17 years. The heartstrings kind of went bling a little bit. Our paths have diverged, and they've come together for this, this little rebound in time. She's with someone now. She's happy. You moved on a long time ago. Keep moving. And more cable. And maybe another cable. And maybe for a change, we'll get a cable. And a cable. Open you up. Hello. Ooh, I see black. And that's on tape four with the tarantula. Oh, fuck, I reset that, yeah, so 145. So I've got to go back 30 minutes. OK, we just need a funny looking thing of me doing something. Well, there's a cat on a telephone pole that I rescued. Looks to me like someone got a little anxious last night. Maybe a little overzealous. I wonder why. Oh, there he is. The reason for this. <laughs> I'm gonna go rescue the little guy. Yes, to prove to the SPCA that the captain loves animals. That's how I got my whole premise for a show. Captain Video uh, Animal Squad. I saw a cat on the telephone pole. It's okay, it's okay, you can't be. Yes, it's okay. Yeah! But I love this stuff. I'm saying that because I, um, I haven't mastered the digital stuff yet on a computer, so I still love this stuff. There we go. That's what I want right there. So, Ralphie, next year, you and me, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll be flying out of our backyard. Woo oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is very cool. Like, what was Ralphie saying about people buying diamond rings and spending their money on bibbles and bobbles? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> this yeah. is an awesome investment. If you want to fly low, really, really make sure... Into the wind. Into the wind. And then before you start to turn downwind, mm -hmm. like climb up to good, safe altitude. You know, take it in, take in the visual. Get to run until you are in it. I hit it right away. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, man. 
Ralphie's gonna die. <laughs> okay, let's see if Ralphie can pay attention to what he's doing. Yeah, Ralph went in, I don't think it was, what, 15 minutes ago, so he should know shortly if these guys are going to put this thing back on the Cable 10 again. But it'll be great fun to see him back on television, for sure. And we'll have a good uh, laugh about it. I passed the DVD along to my regional mm -hmm. director. Just, um, no, there's a few reasons. At the end of the day, that's just the quality is not there, I mean, we're all digital now, and it's just night and day. There's that, and from a corporate perspective, um, there's concerns with some of the stunts that we used to air and think nothing of, but in this heightened sense of liability mm -hmm. in the day and age, we feel that it would just not be smart. Okay. This time around, I think there's should nothing too vulgar on there. It's all pretty innocent, so I think it should be all right. No. No. No, no the fuck, captain. No way. No, no more. Way. No way. No way. No way. Yeah. Uh, over the uh, the over. last fifteen years, I guess people's tastes have changed. Whoever buys cable. Right. So it's uh, no way. Even though I say, oh, it's too dangerous to do at home. Don't try this at home. She personally liked it. She laughed. Well, we had a lot of fun, didn't we? It was a blast. <laughs> I'll put it on the internet and try to make some friendly there. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, what is it's all okay. predestined, buddy. It's all figured out. We just gotta go with the flow. Give it up, man. I Drop want, the rock, I want to talk to, to your. Top. I want to talk to your old mighty's boss. I'm gonna Don't worry about it, buddy. You will soon enough. All <laughs> knees will bow, man. And that'll be it. You'll yeah, have to give do. an explanation. Say, hey, what do you do? I said, well, I help my buddy Ralphie. <laughs> my friendship with Ralph. I can't believe I have a friend like Ralph. Everyone should have a friend like Ralph because he just keeps it all light and we're always laughing and it's just, he doesn't take anything serious. In this world that we're living in, to have a friend like Ralph, you got it made. There's a fine line between living dangerously and putting your life in jeopardy or living in a hermetically sealed ball and living forever but not really living. But if you're gonna sit on your couch all day and, and just imagine life and watch it go by on a big screen, 
I don't, I don't consider that living. You got to get out there, do it, meet people, sing a song, dance, fart in the wind and sniff it, whatever. There's uh, people that talk about happenings, there's people that make things happen, and there's people that sit around and go, what happened? I want to make things happen. Doing the 20th birthday show has showed me how much I have changed towards my body and being a little creakier, but how much things have stayed the same. The time had not passed at all. It just felt like I'd stepped right back onto the old set of Captain Video Show, even though the whole world was a set. And I could play.